Step aside, I'm back again. 50 cocktails you need to know to be a better bartender. You guys know, like, I'm, like, not a good bartender. <laughs> yeah. Am I admitting the facts? Am I, like, here, listen, hold on. The, like, I'm not Greg from How to Drink. I'm not the educated barfly who is the creator of the video that we're gonna be reacting to today. You know how drag queens use drag as a medium for comedy? a medium for art, a medium for fashion, a medium for singing. I use bartender as a medium for comedy. I'm sitting here putting on a show doing alcohol stuff. But you ain't ever gonna catch me behind the bar again, most likely, because I'm in my 30s and I'm too tired. I don't wanna be up till four in the morning and I don't wanna be doing the things that I was doing to be able to be up all night. Anyway, I've reacted to the educated barfly before. He is an amazing bartender. Actually, and he came out with a video called 50 cocktails you need to know to be a better bartender and I'm gonna react to that today I haven't reacted to him in a, like almost two years. We've chatted before I like to call us internet friends even though I want to become actual friends He's a bartender here in Los Angeles, and I'm like I'm thinking about bum rushing him <laughs> I DM'd him and told him like I want to come into your bar one day and just like hang out and have a drink Maybe we'll make a video and he responded being like I would love that but like what would we make? How about I like bum rush you at your bar? How about like I'm gonna go in secret, like I'll dress up in incognito and I'll just be an annoying customer. <laughs> I'll sit there in a wig and order 30 raspberry mojitos and then send them all back because I didn't like them for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever actually do that, but I would love to do something with him in the future. I just love that in the bartending community, everyone's been so nice. Like, I love that I even get to talk to this person and be friends in general. Whenever I react to a bartender on here, they always end up enjoying it. And they're all good spirits, so to everybody, I just want to say thank you. So in this video, he's going to teach us 50 different cocktails that we apparently need to know. So what I'm going to do is rate these cocktails on how badly I actually think you need to know them. Because I have a decade of experience. Doesn't have to be good experience, but I have experience. And I got a whiteboard which is really fun with this white backdrop. Can you, I'm like, it's completely gone now. I'm gonna rate each one of these cocktails from one to five based on how crucial I think they are to know. Cause that's a lot to remember. And if you're somebody out there trying to be a better bartender or trying to learn some cocktails because you want to be a bartender for the first time, you can watch his video initially. But if you're like me and you struggle with like remembering a lot, I'm gonna help like dumb it down for you. Cause if you can remember all 50 of those on the top, yeah, bitch, good for you. But if you need to narrow it down to 10, let me tell you which ones are the most important. So if you like to giggle and laugh and get an uncensored opinion on what bartending is really like, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I put videos out usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late just like your mom. This is like back to school. There's perfect time. Look at me being on trend. Everybody get ready to take your notes. We're gonna watch a long video and bitch, I'm ready. Let's get into it. One of the main questions that I get on this channel is what does it take to become a bartender? And while making drinks is not everything that you need to know to become a bartender. There are a lot of other skills. It is one of the- Yes. <laughs> like dealing with people, thinking on your feet, innovation, and performance. I did all those without any knowledge of being a bartender. I don't know, it worked for me. Good luck, girl. And what you are really expected to know if you're going to be working at any self-respecting cocktail bar is at least 50 classic cocktail recipes. Well, fuck me in the- anywhere. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care. He is probably right. I haven't also, I guess, worked at any self-respecting bar. <laughs> I've worked at popular bars. I wouldn't necessarily call them self-respecting. Look at me. Do I look like somebody who respects themselves? What we're gonna be focusing on is call drinks. And for those of you that don't know, call drinks are drinks that can be ordered at any bar. So if you walk into a any self-respecting cocktail bar, they should be able to make these 50 drinks. And I will be the, I I'm gonna, fuck, I'll let you know. I'll be the one to let you know if that's real bitch. Holy shit. Cause if I don't know these, that means I didn't make them over a period of 10 years. And if you like drinking at home, if you like making cocktails, you should know these drinks too. First cocktail that- Why, hold on, who's making that, who's making fabulous drinks for themselves at home? If I'm ordering like an exquisite cocktail, it's cause I have a butler to make it for me. If I'm making you something super fucking fancy, it's probably cause I wanna fuck you. <laughs> The drinks I make for myself are the drinks I would make at like a football tailgate. I don't know, but that's me. Do you guys make yourself fancy fucking cocktails? Let me know in the comments below. I actually want to know that. I'm going to let him go through each one and then I'll give my opinion afterwards. First cocktail that we're going to tackle is an old fashioned and I like to build my old fashions inside a glass with a sugar cube. Grab a sugar cube and uh, add it in there. Then we're going to do four dashes of Angostura bitters. Add a little dash of soda, then just give it a little muddle. And we're just gonna add two ounces of rye whiskey. So I like to use a rock of ice in my- I gotta stop, I, just, I know, hold on. I already broke my rule. I just gotta let you know, he's doing it the correct way. Every time I made an old fashioned, bitch, it was, it was the whiskey, 
a little bit of water, splash is simple, done. Ah! With the correct garnishes in a rocks glass. But know, the, know where you are. Am I at a fancy whiskey place that's going to be known for whiskey cocktails? Then you're gonna make it like this. If you're at the Abbey where everyone's doing G in the bathroom, you're gonna get something like this. You know what I'm talking about? My old fashioned, since it's just a little bit better presentation, it gives you a little bit less dilution. Drop that into our glass like so, and then give it a stir. I also like to lift the ice as I stir a little bit, and that whooshes the sugar underneath the ice and helps it dissolve a little bit. And then Absolutely correct. I've also never worked at a bar that had blocks of ice. Yeah, crushed ice in every, every time a bartender says, this is the specific ice for this cocktail, they're always right. But I'm always like, where? Where at, at, where at the bar do you have like readily available different shapes of ice? I'm fucking jealous. Never in my life. Then we're just gonna do an orange twist, traditional. And then I like to do a little lemon twist as well, which gives it a little more sharp citrus character. I like to finish my old fashions with fancy cherry, being careful not to get too much of the cherry syrup in there. But if you do, it's still gonna be delicious. Okay, stunning. <laughs> what was the scale? Out of five? All right. Old fashions? Five out of five. You can't even see it! Shit! I'm gonna have to make it much bigger, aren't I? Yes, I am. Old fashioned. Five out of five. This is coming up backwards on my monitor. If it's backwards in the video, I'm gonna be pissed. Well, if it's backwards, hope you all know you're gonna be dealing with this the entire video. Uh, five out of five. Old fashioned. Yes, you need to know it. Are you always gonna get it or have to do it like that? Most likely not, because I will say, over a decade of experience, never served an old-fashioned like that to somebody. Holy shit. So Manhattan's pretty close to an old-fashioned, but you're going to need to have a mixing glass. So first thing we're going to do is four dashes of Angostura bitters, one ounce of sweet vermouth, two ounces of rye whiskey. And we're just going to add some ice here. And then take a larger cube, and with the back of the spoon, crack it. You want to make sure that you stir with a lot of ice. And Manhattan's are served up, so you're gonna wanna use a Nick and Nora, a coupe, or a cocktail glass for this drink. And then the traditional garnish is a cherry. You can put the cherry on a pick if you want, and you have a little treat at the end of your cocktail. Why did I erase it? Son of a bitch. Okay, here we go, baby. Manhattan, five and five. You're gonna need to know that, bitch. But again. <laughs> I mean, that's not over complicated. My Manhattans end up looking like that, but I didn't like, they weren't, they weren't pre-made as fancy as he was. Like it was all made in whatever the mixing cup I make everybody else's drinks in. I think the lesson I'm learning really fast is uh, these drinks, you might have to know them, but don't feel pressure to make them as perfectly as him because this man is a whole motherfucking another level. Let me tell you that right now. People want me to make these videos and I don't just because if I do, you're gonna see how piece of shit I am. Next cocktail we're doing is a Sazerac, which is really close to an old fashioned, although built in a mixing glass. Add a sugar cube, four dashes of Peychaud's bitters, a little dash of soda, and muddle it. Two ounces of rye whiskey. And we're just gonna add our ice. Now this cocktail calls for an absinthe rinsed coupe, which you can just drop the absinthe in, but I like to use a atomizer here, which will give it a nice even coat in the glass. And then we're just going to strain into our glass, like so, and then give it a lemon twist. Some people like to put it in the glass, but you can get a little bit of bitterness from the peel. There it is, the Sazerac. It's stunning. It's fucking, st hold on. Three out of five. I'm saying three out of five. A Sazerac is honestly important to know. I had no idea what a Sazerac was until I started working. But the only reason it's not getting a higher rating for me right now is because if you get the Sazerac, <laughs> it ain't gonna be spritzed with absinthe probably 90% of the time. And a lot of bars have bitters, but we only have one type of bitters. Like whatever bitters he said right here, never even heard of it. Every bar I ever worked at, if we had bitters, it was like, it was, it was one. There was one type of bitter to pick from. And it was beautiful ice, like it's the correct ice. You know what, honestly, I'm not really roasting how I am as a bartender. I'm roasting these bars and like facilities that don't provide bartenders the option to make better co Like if I had, if I had this stuff, I would use it. This is why in the, earlier in the video I said you need to be innovative and like think on your feet. Because we, we have to make drinks wrong sometimes, but still make it right. <laughs> The Negroni is a very simple equal parts cocktail. So we're gonna go one ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce of gin. You can use any type of gin you want and you can use any type of sweet vermouth you want. And that's a really good way of sort of customizing your Negroni. And then one ounce of Campari and take a big rock of ice and give it a stir. And we're gonna take a nice big orange twist, give it a zest. 
Stunning Negroni, holy fuck. And I don't really like gin, but sometimes I do love good Negroni. Five out of five. You're gonna need to know this one! Just know that when you're making a Negroni, like when you're making a nice mixed drink, don't ever use bottom well. I know he's saying like you could pick which one. Use like a medium balance. I would usually go with Hendrix. I would give people Hendrix. I'd respect them. Even if it wasn't the best, I'm not gonna give them whatever is disgusting. Cause if they're ordering a Negroni, they, they think they're special. So you want to treat them like they're special. Holy shit. This is a mint julep chalice and it is the traditional glass for this drink. What you're going to do is you're going to take some mint leaves and we're going to make a little mint sprig for the garnish as well. So we're just going to take the bottom leaves and then we're going to take a cube of sugar, quarter of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of bourbon. We'll take our muddler or a similar blunt object and we're just going to give it a little press. You want to make sure you just press the mint leaves very lightly. We're going to be using pebble or crushed ice for this cocktail. And we're just going to give it a light stir and then we're going to add ice back into the glass like so and we're going to make a little snow cone on top we take our mince sprigs that we made give them a little slap pinch off and we're just going to place them in there like so and you want a nice big bushy mint and there's the mint julep okay mint juleps are very popular and very very well known i want to start by saying that but from my experience, and I'm only going off my experience, just so you guys know, this isn't the universal, like, how-to. I'm just giving you my, I'm here to tell you what I've lived. Two out of five. Like, honestly, two out of five. One, because I think I've, like, I think someone has only ordered this for me three times. I don't know why. Also, never worked in a bar that gave us the tin cups. Never once. No bar has tin cups. None. Not a single one. If you order that from me, you're getting it in a plastic cup that we serve the vodka sodas in. Maybe that's why people aren't ordering them. Hey, we're doing a Tom Collins. Three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of London dry gin. Put some ice into our tin and give it a nice shake. We're gonna take a highball glass, fill it with our ice. We're gonna put soda water. Double strain this cocktail so as to get the ice chips out and avoid more dilution. Add a little more soda. I like to do a lemon twist for this as well. And then just spritz it on top and traditionally, a little cherry. Beautiful Tom Collins, bitch. A uh, little, little funny note. I didn't know that a Tom Collins was gin until three years into bartending. So for the first three years of my life, I was giving people Tom Collins with vodka and no one said anything. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and give that motherfucker a four to five. It's also very easy to fake and trick people. So, you know, there's that. Little sad note. Never in the history of ever have I ever seen anyone double straight to Tom Collins, motherfucker. You are so good. But I am never gonna do that shit. <laughs> Y'all can say what the fuck you want. You want me to double strain a Tom Collins? I'm acting my wage. Give me benef- Give me- as Give me benefits. Give me dental and I'll double strain a Tom Collins. Shut the fuck up. The margarita is a pretty simple drink. It's based on an old school drink called the Daisy, which is a class of drink that takes its sweetness from liqueurs, not sugar. But today we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently. So three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, quarter of an ounce light agave, three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau, an ounce and a half of tequila blanco. We're gonna be making this in a rocks glass. We're gonna rub that lime just around the glass like so, about halfway around. We're gonna take some salt here. And we're just gonna flake that on the side like so. Fill our tin with ice. You had a nice hard shake. Give it a nice double strain. Just gonna finish it off with a little lime wheel. Pause. <laughs> Why are you double straining things when you don't need to? Sometimes, honestly, so, okay, this is no read to him because he's he probably is right for some reason. But sometimes I just like I can't help but think, are these like steps just to make it seem better? Because who out there has double strained a margarita? <laughs> Ever. But regardless on if it's right, who? If your bar requires you to double strain a margarita, let me know. In my experience, you're fucking lucky if you're not getting pre-margaritas in a pitcher. You know, the pre-made ones. Like, do you know how fucking disgusting that is? Double strain. Anyway, beautiful margarita. Five and five. You should need to know these. Because you're not only going to need to know how to make a margarita, there's a billion variants of it. I love margaritas. <laughs> know that shit. Everyone's favorite cocktail, the daiquiri. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and two ounces of rum. Add our ice to our tin. I'm just gonna double strain it into our glass and garnish it with a lime wheel. Okay, the daiquiri. Four out of five. The daiquiri you're definitely gonna need to know, and just like the margarita, there's a lot of different flavors and variants. One thing I've known about people that order daiquiris 
is either they're on vacation or they don't know how to drink. They're very, very sweet and they're expensive and very, very small when serving. So they are well known, but it's not necessarily that people order them a lot. It's that if a person orders a daiquiri, they're only going to order a daiquiri. And it might be just because that's the only drink they know how to order. There are a lot of different ways to tackle the martini, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna show you my favorite ratio. Four dashes of orange bitters into a glass. Grab our dry vermouth here. One ounce, two ounces of gin. Put our ice into our glass. And give it a stir. Strain our cocktail into the glass like so. Just give it a nice twist. Make sure the oil's spread out on the top of the cocktail. And just drop it in like that. Okay. All right. Listen. All right. Basic martini. Bitch, five out of five. Bitches be ordering martinis, okay? One thing I will let you know is that every bar kind of has its own way of making martinis. So a general idea on how to make a martini, like knowing the basic components of it, you need to know. But every bar is going to tell you how to make a martini its own way because there's so many different ways to actually make it, even down to what you garnish it with unless the person ordering it specifies something different. Just a heads up. The Brandy Alexander is just a really satisfying dessert cocktail. We're gonna add one ounce of creme de cacao, an ounce and a half of brandy or cognac. Add in some ice here. So typically this is a drink that would actually add an ounce of cream and then shake it, but I like to stir it and then layer the cream on top. It's just a nicer presentation and you can always mix the cream in if you like. Strain it into our glass and then we're just going to layer the cream on top like so. And there you have the Brandy Alexander. Okay, <laughs> I just learned what a Brandy Alexander was, so I gave it a zero. <laughs> I gave it a zero. I just learned what that was. It looks delicious. I would love to try it. <laughs> The Improved Whiskey cocktail is built a lot like an old fashioned. It is actually the precursor to an old fashioned. Sugar cube into our glass like so. One dash of Angostura bitters, one dash of Peychaud's bitters, one bar spoon of absinthe, one bar spoon of maraschino liqueur. I like to put in a little dash of soda. I'm just gonna give us a nice muddle. Two ounces of rye whiskey. Put this into our glass and stir it. Pull a nice long lemon peel. And twist, make a newer drink. Voila. Well, in the wise words of RuPaul Charles, who is she? Who is she? Ah, uh, zero out of five. <laughs> Don't, never heard of her. Never once in my life, but I want to. That sounds amazing. I'm not just like roasting, I'm learning today. This is fucking fun. Y'all better go and click this video. The link is in the description. The Gin Ricky is a very old drink. It dates all the way back to the 1800s. So you just wanna take four lime pieces, put them in the bottom of your glass like so. Two ounces of gin. We'll take a muddler or a similar blunt object. I like to take a spoon and just like pull these up a little bit. And then we'll add in some ice. And then just add soda. Add in a straw and enjoy. Okay. So we just learned how to make an obnoxious gin and soda. <laughs> gin and soda, bitch! Five! But I mean, you don't gotta get so fucking fancy. It's four. You made a gin and soda with some lime! You made a gin and soda! Five, whatever. I'm gonna get a five out of five because it's a gin and soda. There's many ways to make a Paloma. Today we're just gonna do the most traditional version that we know how to do. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, an ounce and a half of tequila blanco. Give it a shake, give it a strain. Then we're gonna add in a little ice, add in some squirt. The Paloma. Okay. I've, okay, five out of five for Paloma. I've never made it like that. <laughs> Sometimes bars will literally just give you a tequila grapefruit. <laughs> which is like the, the worst way. Most of the time, the way I made it was tequila, agave, grapefruit juice, a little bit of lime juice, and then like, that's it. Grapefruit soda? I would also prefer a tahine rim. I think that should be the standard on Palomas. Um, but I guess, you know what we're learning today? You can order something and it's gonna be made different. Sometimes you don't need to know that much before becoming a bartender, 
Because like I just said, a lot of bars are gonna teach you how to make cocktails the way they like to make it. So in the terms of Paloma itself, five out of five, but don't stress too much because apparently there's a bunch of different ways to make it. The Bee's Knees is a prohibition era sour that just supplants simple syrup with honey syrup, giving it a nice richer and warmer flavor. Three quarters an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, two ounces of gin. Strain into our glass. So here we are, the bee's knees. Okay, but bee's knees. Two out of five. <laughs> Nobody has ever ordered this for me at a bar ever in my life, um, period. However, I have seen it online a lot. I've seen it on TikTok a lot. And it looks delicious. So, I've honestly never made a bee's knees. I would love to make a bee's knees. Do bees have knees? <laughs> Monte Carlo is just a really simple riff on an old fashioned, and we're just taking out the sugar and putting it in Benedictine. Three to four dashes of Angostura bitters. I'm just gonna do a really small quarter of Benedictine. Two ounces of rye whiskey. We got our nice big old cube of ice. Stir it till it's just frosted on the outside of the glass. And then garnish with a lemon twist. Give it a little spritz, like so. The Monte Carlo. <laughs> Monte Carlo, girl, nice to meet you. Never heard of you before in my life, but I would love to get to know you. There's probably like really fancy drinkers on here that are probably like, how do you not know the Monte Carlo? Bitch, cause I'm trash. Where's the Long Island? Like where the fuck is that shit? Where's the shit that's gonna make me fuck people I shouldn't and do things that I'm gonna regret the next day that's gonna give me trauma? That's the kind of shit I drink. I want, a, I want a cocktail that main ingredient is a four loco. I'm still waiting for vodka Red Bull. Where's that? That would have been number two on my list. Should I remake this video, but a version like 10 cocktails every piece of shit drunk should know? The Boulevardier, a bourbon take on a Negroni. What could be better? Pretty simple drink. It's not the same equal parts specs as a Negroni. What we're gonna do is three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth, three quarters of an ounce Campari, an ounce and a half of bourbon. And give it the old whirly twirl. Strain it into our glass like so. Take our orange twist like so. So there it is, the Boulevardier. Stunning, it's stunning. I have never made that. No one has ever ordered that for me, but I have ordered it when I go out to fancy restaurants. So I gave it a two out of five. I also just learned that I've been saying it wrong. I think I've been calling it the Boulevardier. I'm from New Jersey, be happy I could say anything at all. I say both instead of both. I also can't say drawer, drawer. Like the things you pull out, you close in it, drawer. I say draw. The Mai Tai is arguably one of the most iconic tropical cocktails on the planet. And of course, when you make a Mai Tai, you need to have a Mai Tai glass. One ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of orange curacao, half an ounce of orgia, almond syrup, half an ounce of dark agricole rum, and an ounce and a half of Jamaican rum. And we're gonna kill this bottle on this drink. We're gonna be using pebble ice for this cocktail. And what we're gonna do is just a little dab of pebble ice into the tin and give it a whip shake. And do an open gated pour, top it up with pebble. And we finish it off with a mint bouquet. And there's the Mai Tai. Okay, that Mai Tai is fucking beautiful. I just want to say that. This like, I'm, I, I don't know what it is. I'm getting so thirsty, but my nose is running. Like it's, I want a cocktail so bad that my nose is running. <sighs> anyway, four out of five. And I want to explain this one because a Mai Tai you, I think you need to know. Mai Tai is probably one of the most popular cocktails in the world, but people don't order them a lot. And I don't know why. I really don't, especially at night. A Mai Tai is not a night drink. If you're ordering a Mai Tai, you're probably like at a beach bar or it's a bar that has like day performances or like a brunch. Never really at night. Mai Tais are like not a night, night place. So maybe that's why personally I haven't made them a lot because I was usually working in dark seedy places late into the evening. Um, but cute, love it, know it. The Aperol Spritz created in Venice, Italy around 1919. This is a staple in every single bar. Two ounces of Aperol into it, about three ounces of Prosecco. Put some ice in, finish it off with a splash of soda, a little half a orange wheel. Super simple, super tasty, the Aperol Spritz. Aperol Spritzy, one of my favorite brunch cocktails. I get this every time because Aperol Spritz is fancy. It's what people like who respect themselves get during brunch while everybody else gets a vodka soda. Not a vodka soda. I meant to say a mimosa. Why do I disrespect people that get vodka sodas? That's like the most big, cause you know what people that order vodka soda, you're not like, 
You're not bringing anything to the table, okay? You're not interesting. <laughs> but Aperol Spritzy, four out of five, because just like the Mai Tai, if, if it's not during the day, they're not gonna order it. No one's ordering an Aperol Spritz at night. Uh, Aperol Spritz is like a drunk, drunk, Jesus Christ, I don't know why I can't think right now. The Aperol Spritz is a brunch cocktail or a day cocktail. And if people order this from you at night, you're a bartender, say no. People always think, Michael, how dare you say no? No, you say no. And that might just be the way I was trained or where I'm from. I remember I was being trained as a bartender in New York City and it was like 11 o'clock and someone ordered a Bloody Mary and the bartender leaned in and went, fuck you. Who the fuck orders a Bloody Mary at 11 p.m. at night? And I was like, damn. That person never got, that, per that person learned today. The champagne cocktail first appeared in the 1862 edition of Jerry Thomas's Bon Vivant's Guide. It is a very simple drink. We're using Prosecco, although we should be really using champagne, but Prosecco is what we have on hand. So we're just gonna add our Prosecco into our glass like so. Um, I will say that if you do this with Prosecco or sparkling wine, it's gonna be a little bit sweeter and less dry than with regular champagne. Take a sugar cube and then just douse it with Angostura bitters, a couple few dashes, and then you just drop it in like so. The champagne cocktail. I just, bitch, the only, it's it was gonna be a five out of five, it quickly became a zero once I saw that sugar fucking cube. I never went to the bar that has sugar cubes available. That's what I'm talking about. You're getting a squirt of simple syrup. Like what? Also, I never even heard that it was a thing. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, listen, I'm sitting here being impressed. He not only knew about this, he knew that these people, he knew the history. It's fucking amazing. Never made that before. Never even knew about it, nothing. But work, work, I would love to, I would love to see it. The Pink Lady cocktail is a Prohibition era riff off another Prohibition era cocktail called the White Lady, which supplants the grenadine for simple syrup. So first thing we're gonna do is grab our big tin and we're gonna crack an egg and just separate the egg white. Set that aside. And then in the small tin, we're gonna build our cocktail. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarter ounce grenadine, one ounce gin, and one ounce America's first native distilled spirit, apple jack. So you can do a dry shake or a reverse dry shake, whatever your preference is. So for this drink, we're gonna be shaking with one big rock of ice and shake. And strain. I like to do a little lemon twist. Give it a little oil on top. And there it is, the pink lady. Okay, stunning. Beautiful. I've tasted this before and I love it, but one out of five. Only because I've only ever seen this online and I've only ever made it myself because I was making something I saw online. I think this is why I also make sure you guys know, like, know where you are when ordering a drink. I work in nightclubs and like bars like that. We don't even have egg white. I recently learned that whiskey sours had egg white in them, like in the past few years, reacting to people. Whenever I used to make whiskey sour, it was whiskey and sweet and sour mix. That was whiskey sours where I where, like where I worked. It was wrong. It was definitely wrong. But that's what you'd get if you'd ordered it there. You guys see these things on Bar Rescue. You guys see how nasty this shit is. They can't even remember to close the liquor at night. You think they could properly take care of egg whites? You dumb butt, you bitch. We might as well make a Jack Rose. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of grenadine, two ounces of apple jack, ice into the tin. We're gonna give it a nice hard shake. Just give it a strain, and then we're gonna give it a lime wheel. The Jack Rose. Zero. Zero out of five. The only Jack Rose I know is from the Titanic, and I'm still pissed because there was room in that door, and that bitch couldn't move over. He dicked her down good in our car on a sinking ship, and she couldn't even move over on a door. Bitch, I'm pissed. I'm still mad. The Caipirinha is Brazil's national drink, and it also translates in Portuguese to little countryside drink, apparently. We're gonna take six pieces of lime, place them peel side down, add one brown sugar cube, half an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of pachaça, and then we're just gonna give this a little muddle. Add some ice cubes into our big tin. Dump this. Pop it up with a little bit more ice to take up volume. And there you have the Caipirinha. Okay, the cocktail that took me years to learn how to pronounce. Three out of five. You definitely need to know how to make this one. Um, but they just, it wasn't really that often. It was ordered. It was definitely ordered a lot, but not that much, which is why I'm just giving it a three out of five. So if you like 
want to throw one away, even though it's one that you should know, but you know, you want to like prioritize, Caprina, yeah, take it or leave it. But eventually, you sure learn how to make this. Now, since we still have the grenadine now, we might as well make a Mexican firing squad special. Four dashes of Angostura bitters into the bottom of your tin. Three quarters of an ounce of grenadine. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Two ounces tequila blanco. And strain it, take a little Luxardo cherry and a lime wedge, spear it through like so, and just add it to the glass. And there you have the Mexican Firing Squad special. I have never heard of that cocktail before in my entire motherfucking life, but it looks amazing and I want it inside of me right now. I want it inside of me like I'm a woman going on a date with a professional athlete, okay? And I've already poked holes in that condom. The last word is probably one of the most popular equal parts cocktails. It is the cocktail that launched a thousand other cocktails. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of Luxardo Maraschino, three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse, three quarters of an ounce of gin. Drain it, garnish with a little Luxardo cherry. The last word. Man, I don't know if this is the last word, but it's the last time I've, this is the first and last time I'm probably ever gonna hear this. Zero out of five. Well, since when? Who, what, when, or why? She looks very cute, but a lot of people don't know about her. Am I wrong? I hope you guys are in the comments telling me if like, Mike, like, don't be afraid. Let me know if you know this and I didn't. But not, listen, it's one thing if you know it. But do you, do you order it when you go out? Do you see people order it when you go out? This isn't about shit that you just know and drink at home. I'm saying that if you're a bartender, trying to become one, or trying to become a better one, when you're working, do you necessarily need to know this? No. The traditional sidecar is kind of a problematic recipe. It just doesn't really balance well. So today, admittedly, I'm doing uh, a more modern take on the sidecar. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. One teaspoon rich demerara syrup. Three quarters of an ounce of orange curacao. And two ounces of cognac. Give it a strain. Cut a little orange disc and then just give it a little spritz on the top like so, and we're just gonna drop it in there. And there you have the sidecar. Three out of five. Three out of five because you do need to order a sidecar. It's not the most frequently ordered cocktail. And when it was, I was not making it like that, bitch. Not at all. Not even close. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now that this is not the mojito that you guys are used to seeing be made. And I'm not gonna qualify the reason why I make this mojito and why I think it's better. I'm just going to ask you guys to solely try it and see if you like it. We're gonna take a lime, we're gonna cut it into six pieces. And then we're gonna take a pinch of mint. But what we're also gonna do with this mint is make mint sprigs for the garnish. We're just gonna take the bottom leaves and we're gonna leave the top leaves like that. So you wanna take eight to 10 mint leaves Put them in the bottom of your tin. Then we're gonna take your lime and we're gonna put them in here, peel side down. We're gonna add one sugar cube and half an ounce of simple syrup. Then you're gonna need a muddler or a similar blunt object and we're going to muddle everything. Now, the reason why we put that lime peel side down is because we wanna express the oil out of the peel. Once it's nice and muddled, we're gonna add two ounces of rum. Add a small amount of pebble. Take all the contents and just dump it. Top this up with pebble. And last, we're gonna take those mint sprigs and we're just going to give them the old slappy poo. And all the crushy pants to release those oils, twist off the stem, and just place it into the drink like so. And there you have a mojito. Mojito, bitch! Five out of five, you need to know how to make some type of mojito. You rarely ever gonna make that, ever. And when you do make a mojito, you're gonna fucking hate it. Not necessarily because it's obnoxious, but it makes all your shit dirty, okay? It gets in the way. It makes your tins dirty, makes everything sticky. You're gonna hate fucking making a mojito. It's gonna become the bane of your existence, but learn it. And then if you're a piece of shit like me, you're gonna tell people no when they order it. The Corpse Reviver number two is a hair of the dog cocktail first published by Harry Craddock in his 1930 book, The Savoy Cocktail Book. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of our Coke Americano, three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau, and three quarters of an ounce of gin. Before we shake this, we're gonna give it a little absinthe rinse. I like to put this in an atomizer to evenly distribute the rinse. Strain it into our glass, and we're gonna give this a lemon peel garnish, zest it over the top. And there you have Corpse Reviver number two. 
Corpse Survivor number two, bitch. I might as well be dead, because I've never fucking heard of that shit before in my motherfucking life. Zero to five. Today we're doing a gimlet, but we're gonna be doing a more modern take on it. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of chin. Give it a strain, cut a nice lime wheel. Stick that on the rim of the glass like so, and there you have your gimlet. You know what, hold on. I wrote something, but I'm gonna change my mind. I was gonna say a four out of five, but I'm gonna change it to five out of five. Because you know what, it, it is, it's something you definitely need to know. And it's ordered a lot. But people try to cheat it a lot and just give you something more bullshit. This is actually, this is actually a beautiful gimlet. And the truth of the matter is, a gimlet is so fucking popular that whether or not people order it a lot, if someone orders a gimlet, and you don't know how to make it, and you're a bartender, you're gonna get laughed at. So learn that shit. It's like the Pythagorean theorem. You may, you, mo you know, you may, might not use it at all. But if you don't know it, it's like, why are you so fucking stupid? <laughs> the Martinez is the cocktail that purportedly gave birth to the martini. It is named for the town of Martinez, where it is said to have been born. Two dashes of orange bitters one and a half ounces of sweet vermouth, one bar spoon of maraschino liqueur, one and a half ounces of old Tom gin. So add some larger ice cubes on top, give it a stir. Strain it, we're gonna give this guy a lemon twist. The Martinez. Okay, Martinez, a two out of five and I could explain. I have never heard of this before, before recently when I've started making videos with these content creators or watching them. I've never heard of it before, I've never made it. But whenever I talk to Greg, or The Educated Barfly, or Bar Chemistry, everyone, all that, they all know a martini, they all know it. They all know it. Take it or leave it. If I were to have a favorite drink, the Singapore Sling would be it. One ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice, quarter of an ounce of grenadine, the equivalent of one dash of Angostura bitters, quarter ounce Cointreau, quarter ounce cherry hearing, quarter ounce Benedictine, and an ounce and a half of gin. Strain it, and we're gonna top it up with soda, dash more on top, garnish with a pineapple. This thing a porcelain. Look at all those motherfucking ingredients! Look at all those motherfucking ingredients! If there's a cocktail, I would say no to Megan, bitch, is that. And not only is this a zero to five, because I've never fucking heard of it before, my response would be, the only sling I know is the one I fuck people in. Like, what the hell? The Silver Fizz is one of the original egg white sours just charged up with a little bit of soda water. And separate the white into the larger tin. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, one and a half ounces of gin. We're going to add the cocktail solution to our egg white and give it a dry shake. Because this is a egg white cocktail, I'm gonna be shaking with one big rock. So this will give very little dilution, but it's gonna preserve that texture that you want. Double strain, just in case there are any shards of ice. Some nice, very cold soda water, and just build it up. And there you have the silver fizz. The silver fizz. Mama, you need to know a fizz. I've never heard of Silver Fizz. Apparently there's also a Golden Fizz, which I've been tripped up on this channel before. It's regardless on whether or not I've heard out of it. Two out of five, because no one's ever ordered it, and I've never made it before in my life. The Daisy is the great grandmama to the original margarita. That's all you gotta know about it. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Three quarters of an ounce of orange curacao. Ounce and a half of gin. Strain it two bar spoons of very cold soda. We're gonna take a peel, twist it on top, and there you have the daisy. Zero, zero out of five. And I just wanna go on record and say any cocktail that has the bar spoon amounts as measurement options, I want shot in the back of head in front of me. The Jungle Bird is one of, in my opinion, the best drinks that came out of the Tiki Cannon, but it's also quite possibly one of, if not the most balanced. Two ounces of pineapple juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of Campari, and if you think you don't like Campari, you will in this drink, I promise you that. And two ounces of dark Jamaican rum. It's gonna be one of those easy shake and dump drinks, so just a little Scotia pebble ice into our tin. I'm just gonna pour it into the glass, add our pebble. 
Garnish with some pineapple fronds, off it up a little more pebble ice, and there you have your jungle bird. Zero out of five. Zero out of five, never heard of her before once in my entire life. And remember, I'm gonna keep saying this because I don't want y'all to get confused. I am not rating it on how good these cocktails are. I'm rating it on relevancy. Because people watch us make cocktails and talk about bartending online sometimes and think that it's so hard and get intimidated. It's really not. Like, these are things that I think you should know to become a master level. These, like, the knowledge that they have is insane. But don't think just because you don't know, because like, you don't know what a jungle bird is, that you can't be a bartender. I'm gonna tell you right now, 80% of bartenders don't know what that is. It looks good though. Like, I want it. <laughs> the Americana cocktail not only is an incredibly satisfying highball, but it's also the precursor to the Negroni. It was first being served at Gaspar Campari's bar in 1860. Add in one ounce of Campari, an ounce and a half of sweet vermouth. And then what I'm gonna do here is just add in a little bit of soda water and then the ice. And we add in the rest of our soda water. We wanna make sure that the soda water does not layer on top of the cocktail. And so we're gonna try and pour it off the ice as much as possible. We're just gonna garnish with an orange twist. And I like to just like snake the peel in like so. And there you have the Americano. The Americano, I'm gonna give that bad boy a three out of five. You should know it. It's a great cocktail to know for diversity, but frequencies not as high as some of the other ones on that list. That's why it's a three out of five. Very basic, very astutious. Astudious? What am I trying? What was that? The Bamboo Cocktail is a low ABV offering, usually credited to a bartender named Louis Eppinger, who bartended at the Grand Hotel in Yokohama, Japan around 1902. One dash of orange bitters, two dashes of Angostura bitters, one and a half ounces of dry vermouth, and one and a half ounces of Fino Sherry. And give it a stir. We're just gonna drain our cocktail off like so. Let me give it a lemon twist. There you have the bamboo. Looks amazing. Zero to five. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at this title again and like this, like it, I, I need to learn these to be better. I do. So he, don't, he didn't lie once in this motherfucking video. I was trying to teach people like, do you really need to know these? But I'm like, this whole video just might be me reading myself. <laughs> <laughs> the Dark and Stormy is basically a Moscow Mule variation. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. I'm gonna add the ginger beer in at the bottom, a little bit, leaving just enough at the top. And then we're gonna take our rum and pour two ounces. Just slowly pour that on the ice and layer it and give it a garnish. And there you have the Dark and Stormy. Beautiful! Five out of five. I also personally love to put um, muddled up Blackberries in my dark and stormies. That's how a few of the places I worked at required me to do it. Um, even though it's not necessarily needed. Just like I said, some places are gonna teach you how to make it different. But, but this, basically, dark and stormy, popular cocktail, you're gonna need to know it. The Whiskey Smash was created in 1862 by the Professor Jerry Thomas, the godfather of modern bartending. So eight to six mint leaves into the bottom of the tint, reserving the mint sprigs. One cube of sugar, half an ounce of simple syrup, four lemon wedges. And then we're gonna place them into our tin. You wanna place them peel side down if you can. Um, and we're gonna muddle these guys like so. Two ounces of any type of whiskey you like. Today we are using bourbon. We're just gonna take a skosh of pebble ice. Dump into our glass with all of the contents in there like so. And then we're just gonna take those reserved mint sprigs. Give it the old slappy poo, twist it off at the end like so. And then just add it in, give it a straw. And there you have your whiskey smash. That is a stunning whiskey smash. I knew it was gonna be good the second he said a skosh. Anyway, three out of five. It's a popular well-known uh, cocktail. However, if you're working where I was working, like a club or anything like that, probably not gonna really make a lot of whiskey smashes. But if you're working at a restaurant that makes cocktails, like a nice one, not like a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> like, then you're probably gonna need to know a whiskey smash. The fix is the drink that gave birth to the sour category of drink. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of one-to-one -one simple syrup, two ounces of gin. Scotia in the tin. And we're just gonna ungated pour right into the glass like so. Fill with pebble. And just garnish with a little lemon wheel. And there's the fix. Gin fix. I, I, I think j people must have gin forgot because I never heard of that shit before in my motherfucking life. There's a lot of these. There is a lot of these. I might like honestly do super compilations on TikTok 
or Instagram reels on ones that got zero out of five that I don't never heard of that I should probably learn. I also would love it if someone would do a tally on the ones that got five out of five versus the ones that got zero out of five. Not necessarily to let you all know what, how, how much of these you actually need to know, but to let me know if I need to do better. <laughs> The Vesper Martini is James Bond's preferred martini, and it made its debut in the book Casino Royale. One ounce of Russian vodka, two ounces of gin. Give it a stir. Then we're just gonna strain our drink and add a lemon twist. There it is, a Vesper. A Vesper, four out of five. It's popular, and you should know it. And some people do order it a lot, however, Everybody who orders a Vesper always wants to tell you that it was James Bond's cocktail. And everybody that orders a Vesper also seems to suck. The 20th century cocktail is credited to a bartender named C.A. Tuck and was first published in the Cafe Royal cocktail book in 1937. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of Cokie Americano, one of my favorite white wine aperitif liqueurs, three quarters of an ounce of white creme de cacao, and one and a half ounces of gin. Add some ice to our tin. Strain into a glass. Garnish with a little lemon twist. And there you have the 20th century. Well, fucking shit. I'm starting to get mad when I give these zero out of five. Like, I'm starting to get pissed that I don't know these. Um, but it's the truth. Truth! Unless we're talking about 20th century fox, like, I don't know what else, I don't know. It's the fancy gin cocktails. They're not that popular. They're not. They're known, but they're not that, the people don't order gin that much, gin cocktails that much, they don't. French 75 emerged around 1915 at Harry's American Bar in Paris, and it was purportedly named after the French 75, which was a 75 millimeter light field gun used during World War I. Half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, and one ounce of gin. Ice in a tin. And then we're just gonna strain, pop it off with a little bit of the bubbly. For this cocktail, I like to use a channel knife. I'm just gonna nice, long, thin peel and drop it into my glass. Voila, the French 75. That's a stunning French 75 and also five out of five, baby! You definitely need to know that because it's a popular cocktail and people order it. And the people that order a French 75, are the, it's like the one fancy cocktail they own. And they're ordering it not necessarily because they like it, but because they want people to think they know a lot about cocktails and what they're ordering. So you can't fuck these up because these kind of people will try to tell you you're wrong just to tell you you're wrong. The aviation is one of the most polarizing cocktails in the daisy category. Everyone seems to think that they have a build that just hits the right spot and really gets the right balance. I really like the one that we're about to do. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three eighths of our creme de violette, three eighths maraschino liqueur, two ounces of gin, Drain it, cherry, and drop it into the glass. And there you have the aviation. That aviation, four out of five. Same notes as the previous one, only just less common, slightly less common. That's all. The history is a little bit hazy on the rye buck, but it's basically a gussied up Moscow mule. Half an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of ginger syrup, two ounces of rye whiskey. Strain it into our glass. Now add in a little bit of soda water, get the effervescence going. Then we add our ice. Top it up with a little bit more soda water. A lime twist. The Rybuck. Okay, I'm gonna give this a one out of five. Only because I've never heard of it or ever, well, it sounds familiar, but I don't think I never heard of it. So like, I'm confused in my head right now. Regardless, I never made it. If it's a variation of a Moscow Mule, I would look at this person and say, just order a Moscow Mule. <laughs> The Moscow Mule is a cocktail created in the 1940s in Los Angeles, one of the very few Los Angeles cocktails at a bar called the Cock and Bowl. First things first, you want a ah! copper mug? This ah! 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 Oh God, sorry. This isn't even a joke, that just made me laugh. Oh, 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 yeah. It's that easy to make me laugh. All you have to do is say cock, holy shit. I'm sorry. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Two ounces of Russian vodka, so we can rightly call it a Moscow Mule. Again, we're gonna add just a little bit of our ginger beer to get the effervescence going. And then some ice cubes. I'm gonna fill it up there, top it up with a little more ginger beer. I'm just gonna put a little lime wheel on top. And there it is, the Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule, five out of five. 
you need to know how to make this. This is so, I, this is actually not only popular, but also commonly ordered to the point where even the piece of shit places I've worked, you know how I said we really don't have a lot of differentiation between like the cups? You always got a tin for a Moscow Mule. Like even the Abbey got it, all the bar, all the clubs. If you have anything, they have the tin for a Moscow Mule. The kangaroo cocktail is always put forth as the original vodka martini, as it was included in the later editions of David A. Embry's The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. Three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth, two and a quarter ounces of vodka. And for a garnish, just a single olive. And there you have the proper vodka martini, AKA the kangaroo. If you order a vodka martini, it'd be five out of five, just like we did before. If someone came to me and said, I want a kangaroo, I would look at them like I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Zero to five in terms to kangaroo. Okay. And he be flexing. Like I, sometimes I watch his videos and I feel like a piece of shit. Even more so than usual. Because not only did he know kangaroo, he knows the history down to the names of the people in place. Holy shit. The Hemingway Daiquiri, also known as the La Floridita number no. three, was created for Hemingway. Half an ounce of lime juice, one ounce of grapefruit juice, three quarters of an ounce of maraschino liqueur, and we're using an ounce and a half of Cuban style rum. Well, in this case, we're actually using Cuban rum. Here we go. The Hemingway Daiquiri. Okay, I, I said one out of five. It was gonna be zero, but then I remember I took like an online bartending quiz recently and knowing a Hemingway was one of the questions. So I might not know it, but maybe you should. <laughs> the Vukure is a quintessential New Orleans cocktail. It's basically a zhuzhed up Manhattan. And Vukure means old square in French, which is a reference to the French quarter of New Orleans. One ounce of sweet vermouth, two dashes of Angostura bitters, two dashes of Peychaud's bitters, very short quarter of an ounce of Benedictine, one ounce of rye whiskey, and one ounce of cognac. And we're just gonna add our nicely tempered ice, give it a stir, and finish it with a cherry. And there you have the Vukure. God, that looks stunning and is so motherfucking fancy. And that's probably why I don't know what it is. Zero out of five. God damn it. Oh no. The Presbyterian is just a highball gussied up with a lip at our nicely tempered ice. Give it a stir and finish it with a cherry. And there you have the Vukure. The Presbyterian is just a highball gussied up with a little bit of ginger beer. Two ounces of scotch. And of course, we're gonna add in a little bit of effervescence ahead. We're gonna add a little ginger beer ahead, like we do. And we're just gonna split the difference. Half ginger beer, half soda water. And you can just stick it in like that. And there you have the Presbyterian. Presbyterian! I'm gonna give that a one out of five because I think it is known. I just don't know it. I think. I think, just because it sounds familiar, but I don't know, somewhere, I don't, I can't say for sure, but somewhere in the depths of my mind, I think someone ordered this from me once and I looked at them like I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> Take it or leave it. The Pisco Sour originated at the legendary Morris Bar in Lima, Peru. Crack our egg, separate the white. We safely did our egg white in the big tin, make the cocktail in the small tin. Three eighths of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and two ounces of Pisco. Give it a dry shake for about 30 seconds, and then we want to shake with a big rock of ice. Strain it, give it a little Angostura bitters garnish here. So we're just gonna drop, and there it is, the Pisco Sour. The Pisco Sour! Two out of five. I've heard of it before. I've heard, I think I've had it once. But people like, rarely if ever, have ordered that from me in a bar. I don't know if I've ever made it. I might've just had it. The whiskey sour is a drink that everyone thinks the original version had egg white, but the original version back in the early 1800s didn't actually have egg white. It wasn't until 1890 when the New York sour came out that egg white came into play. Today, we are gonna be doing it with egg white because the modern whiskey sour, nine times out of 10 contains egg white and it is fantastic that way. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of bourbon or any whiskey of your choice. And we are going to double strain this cocktail. We're just gonna take a little Angostura bitters here and we're just going to drop two drops. Stunning, stunning, beautiful, loved everything about it. Five out of five for whiskey sour. 
Um, apparently, like I mentioned before, I was making it the traditional way. <laughs> um, even though I was actually just doing it wrong and didn't know. But it's popular and people will order it. But I guess the one thing I'm here to do is to tell you that, you know, you can make it wrong for your entire career. And sometimes people won't even know what the fuck they're ordering. So there is that. And we did it! We did all 50, bitch! We reacted to them all! And please, in the comments, do not ask me to make them because I don't have the funds or patience to do that. Please, please, for the love of God, if you guys want that kind of content, go to The Educated Barfly. He is amazing. And I want to meet you soon because I'm going to come bum rush you at your job, my guy. Be sure to like this video and share it. And if you want to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe. Like I said earlier, I put videos out every Tuesday and Thursday. In the comments down below, let me know. Do you know all these? Do you think you should know all these? Or do you like the view that I'm coming from where I say, you know what, maybe you should know them. But if you're somebody that's like looking to be a bartender, I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you from my experience, do you really need to know them just to be a basic bartender? He is right where if you wanna be a better bartender or a master level or like, you know, up your game, definitely know these. But I just don't want everybody to be intimidated by being a bartender. I want alcohol and cocktails and everything like that to be like, fun and easy breezy and easy going. So that's that's the approach I was coming from today. Special thank you to everybody over on Patreon, especially the regulars and barflies and people who have switched over to memberships here on this channel. I gotta stop speaking so fast. Sometimes my brain moves faster than my mouth. And if that's it guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. My name is Mike MGTV and you are fucking welcome. I brought the drinks. I brought the drinks. Everybody screaming my name at the same time.